Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad here at the Magic Lounge in my World Nerve Center headquarters of Synergy Ventures and Synergy Event Marketing and Synergy Cafe. And today I'm going to do a little presentation for you and I'm going to add a little magic to it. And what it's going to be, it's going to be about the 10 key elements of event marketing. This is a, a program I had put together years ago and it was more focused on the exhibit marketing for trade shows, but I expanded a little bit and it uh, more encompasses the whole world of events in general. But before I do that, I'm gonna get started with this little, I'm gonna do a little demonstration with this little spool of thread. Now, you've heard of David Copperfield. He creates illusions. I'm gonna show you some magic with what I call dental floss. It's not really dental floss. It wouldn't have broke that easy. It's actually mental floss. Get it? Eh, mental floss. <laughs> it's not even mine. This is rental floss. Okay, enough with the corny jokes. Here's the 10 key elements of event marketing. And so this piece of string is going to represent the event and your marketing strategy. So when you do something like that, that looked like I broke, didn't it? That's an illusion. It didn't really break, but it looks like two pieces now. What I do is I crack my knuckle and it actually sounds like it breaks, like you see separate pieces. So when you're putting together an event, there's a lot of things that are involved. There's your core objective. There might be your products and services. You might have at a trade show booth. There's going to be your target audience or the people, your prospects that you're looking for. There's going to be that conversation and how that communication is going to go on in the booth or at the event, whatever you're doing. There's going to be the follow-up. There's going to be some show guidelines or event guidelines that uh, maybe the venue has certain restrictions and things that you need to be aware of. So there's a lot of different elements that are, are involved with this. And that looks like, looks like it's all different separate pieces. Looks like separate pieces, doesn't it? See? So what I do is I take the perspiration from my fingers like this, and I'll take all these pieces like this, and I'm going to put them back together in what I call a barehanded fuse welding process. Watch real close, all these pieces in this little ball. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna stick them on here like this. When I pinch, it'll actually create some, from, uh, some uh, perspiration, will create a bond and it'll actually look like one piece. Does that look like one piece? That's an illusion. Here's magic, watch. Do, 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 do. Ah, hey, isn't that cool? Okay, so there's your whole trade show marketing plan. Easy breezy, coach easy. So to get started, one of the first things, I've got this document right here. And if you would like to have a copy of this, you just let me know, just contact me through social media or email or phone or whatever. The 10 key elements of event marketing. So number one is your objective. What is your objective for the event? Now you don't wanna have a lot of different objectives. It might be just brand recognition, or you might be actually doing collection of leads for your product or service. And you wanna narrow it down to one specific product, don't get too vague. And the reason for that is because if you get too diffused, it's gonna, it's gonna scatter the brain of the person that's watching. So they need to be very focused on what it is that you're, you're targeting. So you need to get real defined on your audience and what you're offering that audience. So your objective is very key whether maybe perhaps it's just like I said, like brand recognition, or maybe you're gonna do point of purchase sales. That's your objective to do on-site sales. That's a little different in a trade show where you're generating leads, but it's still something that maybe you're actually gonna do sales and you need to know exactly how many sales are you gonna to have to make to be able to pay for your booth space and your staffing and your hotel rooms and things like that. So you gotta come up with that concept in advance, well in advance. And then there's the element of pre-event promotion. So this is number two, the event that you're attending. Sometimes when people would exhibit at trade shows or they would participate in an event as a sponsor, they, they don't do any pre-event promotion. They don't, they don't do promotion before the event, letting people know that you're gonna be there. And sometimes they don't do this because they think it's, it's on the, uh, the show producer to draw the people in and I don't have to do my own marketing because the show is doing all that. I came to take from the event. But you need to take into consideration your competition may have invited your prospects to the show. 
And when that prospect gets there and they find out that the prospect invited them, but you did not, they're going to maybe feel offended that you didn't invite them to the event. So it's good to do some pre-show promotion, whether it be just a basic email inviting them to stop by our booth or come and visit us at the show or at the event when I'm there, please come by and visit, or maybe a direct mail postcard or maybe even a phone call. You want to call them up and say, hey, I really want you to come to this event and stop by our booth and come and see us. So, and like I said, this is also for just events in general. If you're, if you're uh, sponsoring an event, maybe you're sponsoring the bar or you're, got a, you're speaking at an event, you want to invite these people to it. So you got to do some pre-event promotion for it. The next uh, element on the, on the list is the message. You need to get real, real clear on why you're inviting this person to this event. Is it just to have a couple of beers or is it uh, just to, to haven't seen you for a long time? If you've got an agenda, then you need to let that person know what your agenda is. Otherwise, it's going to feel like that bait and switch. Hey, why don't you come out with us some cocktails and talk? By the way, you want to buy my stuff? So you don't want to do that. And a lot of people do that kind of stuff. They kind of just lure them in and say, hey, uh, why don't you come and check this out? And then they spring it on them, but they're actually trying to sell you something. So your communication needs to be real clear about what you're doing and why you're doing it before you go just inviting people randomly. So number four is the element of giveaways and pre-event promotions. And like a lot of people, they fill their booth with flyers and business cards and they just give out business cards and flyers, or they might have a candy dish and people come and they take the candy and then they leave. Or they might have pens, you're giving away free pens or tchotchkes or swag or trash and trinkets sometimes they call them. It's because uh, some people are just giving things away. What you want to do is you want to have something that's relevant to whatever your business is. So it's, uh, it's memorable. And so when they get back home, it isn't just, oh, look at this uh, a pen from Acme Insurance Company. What the hell is this? It's got to be relevant to what it is that your product or service is all about. Like if you're selling software as a service, maybe you're going to give away a USB drive or something on there. And it has your logo and things on it. And then maybe on the USB drive is a little piece of your software or a sampling or something like that or a, a PDF that they can download. So whatever the giveaway is, it should be relevant to what you're doing. You can't just be giving away stuff. Even the candy dish. I always like it when I go to trade shows and things and people got chocolate. I always stop by and grab some chocolate. Um, so I've got a quick question on that. I had a, a good suggestion is there was a packaging company I used to work with. And what he had in his booth, he always had, he always had a popcorn machine in his booth. Now he didn't do that for the attendees because his target mark that his objective he wanted to connect with the exhibitors so he had the popcorn machine in there because on slow times the exhibitors would come to his booth get some free popcorn so he had a reason why he's giving away giveaways that was connected with his objective so number five is the graphics now this is an interesting element in that some people think okay put your your signage put it on the very top of your booth Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on what is your objective. What do you want to have happen? There's a thing called VAC or visual auditory kinesthetic. And the visual element of it, it depends on where a person's eyes are. Sometimes when they're looking up, they're in a thinking mode. You know, they're, they're, they're thinking about things. When they're looking down, they're usually in more of a decision mode. So you want to put your graphics out that way so that when people are looking up, it triggers something in the brain where they're thinking about things. And when they're looking down, maybe they're gonna make that buying decision. So that maybe that's where you wanna have the phone number for you know, call us for more information because they're thinking about buying it. So give some consideration to the graphics and you wanna also consider like here, I'm wearing black and I've got a black TV in the background. That isn't a good contrast, but I put the shirt on for the contrast for the string. <laughs> So you want to give consideration to all that background and all these other elements of your graphics. Is it, is it a bunch of small words, bullet points, and things like that? People aren't going to read that. They've got about seven seconds as they're coming by your booth. You need something that's going to be catchy and draw them in and be informative and be helpful. So that's graphics for you. And again, the product, whatever your product or service is, you might want to have that in the booth or at the event that you're going to be doing so that people can actually know what you're doing. They might want to kick the tires and 
and feel out what the product is. You might want to have that on site instead of just saying, oh, well, we'll get that later. So it's always good for them to be able to see and have it a tangible kind of thing so they know what it is that you're offering. And number eight, show guidelines. You want to have that, take that into consideration because it's possible that the show or the event that you're doing might have certain restrictions to it. So you want to take all that kind of stuff into consideration before you don't want to make plans and then show up and find out, oh my God, they don't allow that. Like if you say, for example, your banner, you want to put your banner up at the, at the show and you find out they don't allow you to tape anything on the walls, but you brought a big roll of duct tape and you find out they don't want you taping stuff on the walls. How are you going to put your banner up? So you need to know the show restrictions. Are they unionized where you can't plug stuff in because you're not a member of the union? You have to bring your checkbook so you can, or some cash so you can pay off the union people. <laughs> okay, stop it. All right. So the show guidelines is a, a definitely a, a factor. Number nine is the follow-up. A lot of people don't follow up. They go to the show, they hand out a lot of cards, which in reality, you should be taking in cards. So if you did take in some cards, you got a handful of business cards, you put them in your pocket, throw them in your briefcase, put them in your purse or whatever. And do you actually follow up with these people? Now, is it a good idea to follow up right away? Maybe yes, maybe no. Because a lot of other people are going to be following up right away. Maybe it might be good to wait a day or a week and hit them later. Or maybe it's a good idea to contact them right away. As you got a slow time in the show for lunch or whatever, scan in all the business cards with your phone and contact them right away. Um, uh, leave a voicemail, say, hey, I'm at the show. I don't know where you are right now, but uh, appreciate you stopping by our booth. And I'd like to have a call with you Monday. Could you give me a call back? Let me know what your schedule's like. Do that in advance and sort of get a jump on everybody else. Or like I said before, maybe you want to wait a couple of days and let, let the, the surge, because after the show, oh my God, I'm getting all these calls from all these vendors and it's just too much. And you might want to wait a little bit and then hit them when it's not so busy. So the last one is the element of evaluation. When you're all done with the show, you need to evaluate it. How did things go? I have a little checklist. These are the things that I did and follow up and, and I, did, I did all these things and we had uh, we forgot uh, um, tape. We forgot a scissors. I wish we would have had a stapler. We should have brought some paper clips. Take it and evaluate all that stuff that you might have forgot to bring to the show. Um, I've had situations where I forgot about a show and I didn't have my business cards or anything. <laughs> so it's a good idea to reevaluate, take a little checklist, see how you can improve. Anyways, that's my story, Morning Glory. That's all I've got for now. If uh, you have any questions about anything, feel free to contact me on social media. Here's how you get a hold of Magic Brad. All you do is you go into that search engine thing called uh, Google, and you Google the keyword Magic Brad and any other keyword you have, and you'll find something that I've got out on the internet, whether it be a blog post or whatever. So whatever your business is, if it's golf or you're a computer person or whatever, you just Google Magic Brad, you'll find me. You can connect with me on all social media. That's how you find Magic Brad. So that's all I got for you now. Peace out and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well. Thank you. Enjoy. Be safe. Thanks. <laughs>